Gmod is insanely realistic for a game that came out in 2004. All right, look, it's been nearly 20 years since Gmod was first released, and in that time, it's gone from being on the cutting edge of graphical fidelity to a game that I'm pretty sure I could run on my mom's laptop. I still remember the first time I booted up Gmod. It was insane just how realistic everything looked. Everything from the weapons, the maps, the characters' faces, the beautiful endless skyboxes. I could practically taste the stone on the little dirty ass little dirty platform in the middle of GM Flatgrass. I could taste it. But, unfortunately for Gary's mod, time waits for no game. And after two decades of video games as a whole multiplying in graphical fidelity, it's finally starting to look very dated. The unmistakable Source Engine charm is still there, just as present as ever, but the wow factor of how great the graphics look is now completely gone, and there's, unfortunately, no way to get it back. Or is there? Gmod realism is a phenomenon that, honestly, I was very skeptical of at first. I saw countless videos here on YouTube of people playing these insane, Frankenstein-ass versions of Gary's Mod that turned the game into an over-the-top, super-realistic shooter, and my gut reaction was, well, why? Why don't they just play a game that's already realistic? It's not like there's any shortage of tactical shooters on the market now, and I'm sure any one of them would be a better experience than Gmod in just about every way. But then I realized that it wasn't about playing the most realistic game possible. It was about pushing the Source engine, and Gary's mod, to its absolute limit just because they could. Which honestly, is actually pretty damn cool. So today, in honor of those brave soldiers who download 40 gigabytes of workshop content onto their hard drive to try and make Gmod look pretty, I'm giving myself the Herculean challenge of making Gmod look as realistic as possible. Partly because I want to see how loud my GPU's fans can get, and partly because, well, I want to be able to relive the experience of opening up Gmod and being blown away by how good it looks. So, without further ado, let's jump right into the process of turning Gary's Mod from a silly sandbox game to real freaking life. The graphics are the most important part of making any game look realistic, and I have to be very careful with how I approach overhauling them. Too little, and nothing will have changed. Too much and it'll start to look like a shitty Michael Bay movie. Just to be clear on how I'm defining graphics, I just mean anything that isn't me. So right now, anything that isn't this guy is on the table to be tinkered with. Yeah. I figured I'd start from the outside in, as in external changes to the graphics before I even think about tinkering with any of Gary's Mod's actual files. Obviously, and honestly probably very predictably, I'm starting this off with Reshade. If you don't know what Reshade does, that's, that's good news, because I also don't know what it does. Reshade is uh, some files or some sets of files that you can inject to any 3D game to give it stuff it might not have by default, like depth of field, fake ray tracing, chromatic aberration, stuff like that. If you're familiar with the post-processing tab in Gmod, uh, think of it like a super high-tech version of that. Anyways, I figured I'd start off our realism journey by installing a realism preset for Reshade. The most popular one made for Source is Aperture Reshade, and from what I've seen, it looks pretty damn good. This isn't going to do anything super fancy, but it should theoretically add some cool post FX to our Gmod and spice it up a little bit. Here's how the game looks by default, and here's how it looks with Reshade enabled. Not bad, but not that big of a difference. We're still being fairly limited by Gmod's ancient King Tut ass assets. So, we're going to have to get our hands dirty and actually install some mods into this thing. Starting off first with CSM Editor. This is a mod that basically just lets you play with lighting. I don't really understand the specifics of it or what it does on a technical level, but it makes my shadows in Gary's mod very, very crispy. And in general, it's kind of just like a button I can press to instantly make the game look better. It also adds this real-time lighting type thing to the sun, and it's honestly kind of crazy just how good it makes the game look. I never thought I'd have so much fun playing with shadows in GM Construct. I combined CSM and the default sun, fog, and sky editors that come with Gmod to make GM Construct look very pretty. And by this point, I was already kind of blown away by just how great the game already looked. But I knew it could look better. So I headed back to the workshop and picked up HD Props, a mod that does pretty much exactly what you think it does. It remasters all the props in Gary's mod with crispy, pristine new textures. These look pretty good, and while I don't really put props up in my face too often, they definitely add a lot to the bigger picture. 
I had also planned to download remastered HD variants of every single texture that was present in the game, but pretty much every add-on I found that purported to do that was either broken or didn't replace every texture, so I figured I'd just do the next best thing and download AI upscaled versions of textures one by one. I downloaded AI upscaled buildings, AI upscaled eyeballs, AI upscaled combine, and of course, AI upscaled soda can. These look pretty cool and improve the graphical fidelity without compromising Gmod's original look at all. I know some people would probably have preferred it if I used Half-Life Alex textures for GM Construct, but honestly, I just really don't like how those look, and I found they kind of clash with Gary's mod, honestly. I'm trying to make the game hyper-realistic, but I also want Construct to still look like Construct. Also, I installed this Better Grass mod from the workshop because, well, honestly, Gmod's grass is kind of just notoriously but ugly. There's some other stuff I downloaded like better water and improved particle effects, but for the most part, I'm happy with what I've done on this front. The game looks noticeably more realistic, and Gary's Mod's unique visual identity hasn't been compromised. At least, not yet. The game looked great visually, but I still had a pretty big problem. The guns. Now, as much as I love Half-Life 2's weapons, they are anything but realistic, and there are probably like 10,000 different inaccuracies in each weapon model. They're also made up out of like 20 polygons, and they're right up in your face and on screen 24-7, so I know I just kind of have to throw them in the garbage if I want to move on. I did want my Gmod to still look like Gmod at this stage, so I decided that instead of jumping straight out the gate with custom weapons, we'd probably have better luck overhauling the default weapons. And nothing would complement my new reshade filter more than HD reanimated weapons. Luckily for me, somebody has very graciously ported over the remade Half-Life 2 weapons from M-Mod straight into Gary's Mod, which meant that I basically just had to click one button and my entire arsenal was remastered. Based. They looked really nice, sounded nice, and added a modern sheen to the dated default Gmod weapons. I particularly really liked the way the crowbar looked. It's awesome. But I knew I could still take it further. The point of this challenge wasn't just to port Half-Life 2 M-Mod to Gary's Mod, it was to make Gmod look as realistic as I possibly could. In those cool-ass Gmod realism videos that I saw on YouTube, particularly the ones by Skip Fighter, Modern Warfare weapons seemed like the weapon of choice for most people and resulted in the best-looking product. Which makes sense. They are insanely realistic, vastly overanimated, and they come with a pretty expansive pack of attachments to make the gun look exactly how you want. So I downloaded those, and was honestly very impressed with how much they added to the game already. I had played with weapon add-ons before like M9K weapons and Insurgency weapons, but these were easily the most professional feeling weapon add-ons I had ever installed, and they honestly made the game feel nothing like Gmod. I did notice though while playing with the Modern Warfare weapons that my hands were still nasty old Gmod hands, so I downloaded this add-on that replaces the default view model hands with HD realistic CSGO view model hands, and that fixed it up pretty nicely. Also, I added in leg self-awareness because I think that's just honestly a really cool underrated feature from video games and it looks awesome. In addition to my remade default weapons, I now had a pack of insanely weighty, realistic, and loud guns. Honestly. I was kind of already insanely impressed by how good my Gmod looked with just a few workshop mods, but I knew that to really take it to the next level, I needed a change of scenery. Alright listen, uh, GM Construct is great, and I really really love it. It means a lot to me and it's a place I've made some very sentimental memories. But it's not realistic at all, and it's really just a bunch of primitive shapes that Gary slapped together when he was like 15 years old, and it's only ever going to look as good as that. So, I did what I had to do and threw GM Construct to the wayside and headed to the workshop to find the most realistic map I possibly could. Honestly, picking out realistic maps was way harder than I would have anticipated. There were plenty of incredibly detailed, really nice looking maps, but they weren't exactly realistic. As good as it might have looked, I wasn't going to be able to trick anyone into thinking that GM Construct 2022 was a real life place. So, I had to look for something even more realistic. I first experimented with maps that utilize photogrammetry which is a big old nerd word that means uh, you scan a room with your camera and it turns it into a 3D model, I think. These maps looked great, and at certain angles it was literally indistinguishable from real life. Seeing the Dr. Kleiner ragdoll inside of a real life bedroom was definitely crazy as hell, and I was pretty sure that at this point I had found the winner. The problem that I ran into though was that if you scrutinize these maps even a little bit and zoom into the surfaces of objects, it looks like a weird paper mache type thing, which believe it or not is actually not realistic. I think this happens due to the inaccuracies of smartphone cameras or something, but either way it just wasn't going to work and wouldn't hold up to any scrutiny. Another issue is that, again, these are real life scans. 
The mapper can't just add a room or make the map bigger because that would require scanning another physical room in real life. And let's be honest, nobody wants to put a 3D scan of the entire layout of their real life home into the hands of a Gary's Mod player. So both of the photogrammetry maps that I found were really, really small and that unfortunately meant that I had to give up on the entire scanned room idea. As great as they looked and as undeniably realistic as they were, they aren't really proper Gmod maps and they're kind of just big 3D models which means you can't interact with literally anything in the map, and it would be way, way too limiting to use any of them. So, I thought I'd settle for the next best thing, a crazy realistic Gmod map called Atmospheric House. It's a pretty big house map that I'm pretty sure is directly ported over from some horror game, and it's got some very, very nice looking high resolution textures. It's also got some incredibly realistic atmospheric lighting, and I think most people would have trouble recognizing it as Gmod if you didn't tell them it was. The test I've been doing to see if a map is realistic enough is uh, spawning Dr. Kleiner and seeing how out of place he looks, and he definitely, definitely looks out of place in Atmospheric House, so I figured that this one would be the winner in terms of the most realistic Gmod map, and also a map that would give me the least amount of headaches. I was pretty much out of ideas at this point, and I considered just sticking with GM Construct and calling it a day, because where was I possibly going to find a map that looked good? was large, and was also well optimized. And then I thought back to this one time I was playing CSGO a few years back, when I was randomly dropped into one of the most beautiful, expansive, and realistic maps I had ever seen in a Source game, Insertion 2. Insertion 2 was mostly perfect. It's a gorgeous looking map that focuses very heavily on realism, it's very big, and the best part is it's made for Counter-Strike, a game that pretty much forces every map that's in it to be optimized as hell. Honestly. If you didn't know, you'd have a lot of trouble even realizing this was a map made for Counter-Strike. It completely disregards any and all map making meta and puts realism over gameplay in just about every aspect. It looks cool, it's cozy, and it's the perfect blend of realistic and actually usable for Gary's mod. So yeah, this is my new GM construct from now on. It's nice, it's big, and it passes the Kleiner test. Of course. What good is a realistic map if there isn't any realistic people to inhabit it? Barney and Kleiner and the G-Man all look pretty damn cool, but they're also made in like 2004, and I feel like realistic guy technology has advanced quite a lot in 20 years, so we're gonna get rid of them. Finding myself realistic NPCs was honestly a pretty hard task. I thought I had my work cut out for me by just using this photo scan of a real human guy, but he gave me really bad vibes and in general just looked hella weird, so I decided against it. I did find this guy in the workshop that exclusively uploads very realistic real life scans of Asian women and Kim Jong Un, I guess, but I don't know how morally correct it would be for me to collect a harem of real life Asian women ragdolls in my Gmod game, so I ended up just downloading a bunch of realistic soldiers instead. These guys weren't bad, and they were definitely a step up from Half-Life 2 characters, but they didn't really work in every map and some of the models were honestly just kind of overdoing it, so I decided to use Half-Life Alex assets for Citizens and the Combine. These work pretty well, and blend into just about any realistic map you throw at them. The Alex assets definitely have a stylized sort of look to them, but they're probably the best I can do and the most realistic human models we can achieve within the confines of Gary's mod, and I absolutely, completely refuse to download 3 gigabytes of Asian women onto my computer, I'm, I'm not doing that. I realized by staring into the mirror that I myself was still a very low quality Gary's mod guy, so I downloaded this HD soldier player model and that took care of that. Now. Basically every human or human adjacent person in my Gmod installation was of much higher fidelity. So at this point, my Gary's Mod looks pretty realistic. The only problem is that my Gary's Mod doesn't feel very realistic. I was still zipping around maps like a speed demon, and I could jump 20 feet in the air, and when I shot a guy he kinda just stood there and looked at me. All of it still felt very artificial, and if I was gonna make Gmod truly as realistic as I possibly could, I had to focus on improving interactions. The word uh, interactions covers a lot of things, but in general, I just want to change how things react to the player, and in some cases, how the player reacts to things. We'll start off very, very simple by installing Vmanip. It's an animation library that basically lets you do anything you could want with your left hand while your right hand holds the gun. This adds simple things like interacting with doors, adding a flashlight to your left hand, and reaching your hand out to pick up objects. It's a small touch, but I think it adds quite a lot and grounds the game in a really realistic way. It also lets me just kick people in the head with my big ass boot, and that's probably the coolest, that's probably the coolest thing ever. 
I downloaded player movement speed changer and made my character walk and sprint at much more believable speeds. I wanted the NPCs I was shooting to react much more realistically to being shot, so I installed a bunch of mods that kind of tone down how much they fling around when you shoot them, and also makes the ragdolls a lot more weighty and bloody. I installed Fedoria, which is a mod that aims to bring the legendary ragdoll physics from GTA 4 into Gary's mod. This was definitely the most time-consuming part of the entire experience, because I spent the next hour having way too much fun flinging myself around and smacking into walls at 900 miles per hour. So, yeah, I wasted a lot of time on that one. These all worked together pretty well, and the game was already feeling 10 times more weighty and responsive. I decided to also install V-Fire, a complete fire overhaul that adds actual spreadable, realistic fire into the game. I experimented with some more crazy add-ons like eye view attachment in an effort to create a body camera slash helmet camera effect, but honestly, no matter what I did, it just looked bad, and I couldn't figure out how to make it look good, so I decided against using it and just called it a day. I decided that it'd probably just be a better idea to add a fisheye lens in reshade, and that ended up looking pretty cool and giving a lot more depth to the game. It kind of ended up making it look like that one uh, Unwrecker game that I had seen floating around a few weeks back, and that was pretty cool. So, yeah. I downloaded some cool interactions like Slide, a head bobbing add-on, and in general just did whatever I could to make the game feel more modern in terms of how it responds to player movement and input. And, honestly, it was looking pretty damn good, which meant that I was basically done with this whole thing. So, that was everything. I overhauled Gmod's graphics, changed their weapons from this to this, found the most realistic maps I could, and put the most realistic humans I could put on them, and completely overhauled the way the world of Gmod works and how it responds to player input. So, what do I have to show for it? Uh, this. So what did I learn by injecting gigabytes and gigabytes of mods into my copy of Gary's mod and turning it from a 2004 Half-Life 2 game to the latest entry in the Call of Duty franchise? Well, I learned a lot of things. I learned what makes Gmod realism players tick, and why they do the insane things that they do. And I learned that the Source engine, if you take the time to sit down and tinker with it, can still look pretty damn good. It would almost certainly have been easier to just buy Ready or Not for like 30 bucks or whatever on Steam, uh, but this is fun. This is free, and it's kind of cool to be able to look at Gmod after all these years and still be impressed by its graphical fidelity. I have the utmost respect for Gmod add-on creators that put hours and hours of work into all of these add-ons in an effort to keep Source alive. With that said, doing all this crazy-ass modding also made me appreciate Gmod's original style that much more. It may not have much visual flair to it, and it may get outperformed by even the most basic Unity or Unreal Engine game, but it's undeniably got some soul ingrained into it. And soul, well, soul is something that can't be replicated by ticking a box in Unity. Not yet, at least. So, that was my truly wacky and wild adventure through Gary's Mod Realism. It might not have been the most realistic Gmod gameplay ever, but I tried my best to make it translate through every aspect of the game. Uh, I wanted to be able to experience realism on any map, from the most realistic ones I could find to something simple like GM Construct. So I did have to cut some corners to make the whole thing scalable and usable no matter what I was playing. If you liked the video, be sure to subscribe and also to give me $1 million. Oh, and uh, just in case you're curious, the total size of all the mods I installed only ended up being like 15 gigabytes. Also, this is what my computer sounded like the entire time I was recording this video. Yeah. Huge shout out to Skip Fighter. His videos are some of the best Gmod Realism content on YouTube, and I wouldn't have been able to make this video if his channel didn't exist. So, uh, that's it. Thanks for watching. I've been Ratlobber. Uh, peace. Come out and play! I can't! I'm playing!
playing nut. But there's portable nut. What? Yeah, it's a nut you can play with outside. PSP. It's like a nut you can play with outside.